Hello and welcome back to our Shooter Bot AI series. In this episode, we are going to add the impacts and death for our bots. So at the moment, our gun is going to just shoot five bullets out and they're not actually going to do anything to the enemy. And we can have a look at the code here for the firing of the gun. And it's a simple line trace and we are already got, we do already have the apply point damage in here, which is useful. Um, and we can see we are applying 0.1 damage to it. So health in this in this game is going between zero and one. Um, in the end, it should always be zero to one if you're using like a progress bar or anything like that for uh, visuals. Um, but in this case, 0.1 means a tenth of the health. So the thing I need to do on here is I need to change the trace channel of my line trace from visibility to camera. Now that's because my pawns are set to by default to ignore visibility traces. And you can see that here on the player one, if we go to the capsule component, you can expand open the collision preset and you can see it's set to ignore visibility traces. So set the camera and it will be blocked by that. So now our enemies should be receiving damage from our gun. So I'm going to go back to our gun play here with the enemy and and if I, there you go. So you, you saw sparks coming off of him, showing that the bullets are in fact hitting him. So let's make them actually do the damage and kill the enemy. So I'm going to go over to the enemy blueprint. So I'm going to click on the enemy here, go to edit bot. And as you can see here, the bot also has fire bullet and he set the trace channel camera because that's what the player is um, on there. But here we need to do an event for when they receive damage. So right click and type in the damage keyword and you'll see event any damage now event any damage here we're going to take the damage value and take away from a health variable so make the new variable for health and we'll do we we'll actually call it current health and make that a float and we're just going to add another one for max health which is also going to be a float Compile it and set current health here to one and max health to one as well. So on the event, any damage, take out your current health value, which is get. And then from that, we're going to take out and do minus float. And we're going to take away the damage that we're dealing from it. So it'd be current health minus the damage. So when it's 0 0.1, it'll go down from one to 0 0.9 and so on and so forth. Once you've done that calculation, we need to set it back to the current health. So drag that back up and do set current health. Then we want to check to see what the health is. If it's zero or less, we need to kill the enemy. So from this float, do less than or equal to and leave it at zero. And that will go into a branch. On the true part of the branch is where we want to kill the enemy. So for this, I'm going to make a new uh, event on here and we'll do a custom event and we'll call this one enemy death so let's go back up to our damage event here and on the true type in enemy death okay so on the enemy death here um we're gonna do a few things the first thing we're gonna do is detach the controller away from the pawn so just drag out and do unprocess or well, first of all so you think right click get AI controller and then from that do unprocess plug that in and you need to put controlled actor self on that uh, get AI controller so that will detach the logic away from it and make it stop moving and so forth then we want it to basically uh, collapse on the floor and die so for this we're going to take the mesh part of the character and we're going to enable physics onto it. Now, when you do want to do ragdoll, your main thing you want to do here is not just enable physics, but we need to change some of the collision presets from a query only setting to a physics based setting. So it will then clump and fall on the floor. So on the mesh, drag this out and do a set collision object type. Uh, no, sorry, collision enabled. Sorry, my bad. Collision enabled and change that from no collision to physics only 
you then want from the mesh drag out and do simulate physics tick in the simulate box and then hit compile so let's see how this looks now I'm going to shoot the the enemy here okay so where is he there he is And there he goes rolling down the stairs now when he's dead here like this it's all good however you'll find the capsule is still there it's blocking my path here in fact so as well as dropping the physics of the uh, mesh here we want to also turn off the capsule so um, let's go into that and we can drag the capsule component out and set the collision of that to be no collision and then if you want your enemy to fade away after a amount of time and disappear all you have to do is drag out and do set life span in here just put in the number of seconds you want it to stick around when it's dead before it despawns so i'm going to do here five seconds hit compile and save that and let's see how that plays And now he will disappear like that. We can also make him drop the gun and make the gun fall separately too. So I can just drag the, the gun mesh out. And that is the gun mesh, yep. And I'm going to set simulate physics on that too. And that should fall away from where we've attached it. At the moment it's sticking to his hand. It should fall separately from it. So... I'm going to try and kill him on the stairs. Um, like that. And hopefully... Oh no, okay, we have to tell it to actually detach then. Uh, so we'll, before we do that, we'll tell this to detach. One component. And then do that. Okay, let's try it again. And the gun is no longer in his hand. And probably we have to tell the collision on the actual gun to collide with the floor. Go down to the collision settings. And yeah, except by default to have no collision. So let's change that to uh, block all on this thing here. So simulate physics. And we'll do set collision object uh, profile. Uh, no, what should we call it? um we'll change there to have collision so set collision enabled and we're going to tell it to be physics only i'm going to put this after this like that so now the gun will fall away from the uh character so alongside all this, the other thing we're going to do is make it so that when we shoot at him, it's going to register that as part of the AI senses. So let's go to the AI controller and go to the AI perception. And on here, we're going to add another senses config. We're going to add the damage one. And just expand open, make sure that's all OK. Yep. OK. Compile and save that. Now this is going to work exactly the same way as we see here. It's just going to detect a sense of actor and do it as if he's seen us, basically. So we're going to go back to the bot here. Uh, not sorry, not to the bot. Onto the uh, actually, yeah, no, we could do it on the bot. So we go to the bot and we'll go to the event damage here. And what we're going to do on the force of this branch is report a damage event. So drag this out. Report damage event. The damaged actor is the self. The instigator is going to come from the damage causer. 
So drag that out and put that into there. And the damage amount will take from here to there. And the event location is going to happen at this box location. So get actor location. Hit compile and save that. Now, when you get though, do hit him, um, he's going to get that location at his position. So what's going to happen here is he will turn and look at where he got hit on himself rather than where the shot came from. We're going to do that. That's something slightly different. But for now, let's see if this will work in its place. So I'm going to try and sneak up behind him and shoot him. Yep, there you go. And there you go. So that bot will now disappear and we're good to go. So that's how we do impacts on the enemy. If we do impacts on the player, you can do that as well. So we're going to go over to the player character. And we're going to do an event any damage event on here too. Event any damage. Now, on event any damage here, we're going to just simply take this away from our health, uh, which we don't have yet. So let's do that here. Do current health as a float. And we'll do max health as well. The float two. Set them both to one. And same as we've done before, we take out our current health minus float and we'll take away the damage from the current health and send it back to the current health we then want to check whether or not that is less than or equal to zero is uh we'll do death and respawning but for now let's just do a death of the by just destroying the actor okay compile and save so we should now take damage from the enemy as well. So let's test that out and see. I think, by the way, I didn't add the applied damage to the bot. Let's have a look at the bots firing here. Um, no. Okay, so we've got to do that. So let's just apply damage here. In fact, I'm going to apply point damage. Apply point damage instead. Now, what point damage is going to do is it's going to send over all the hit information from here too, which can be very useful for the player to know which what direction the shot was coming from. So the hit info we will drag into there. The hit from direction is going to be coming from the uh, impact normal. Uh, so we can do impact normal here, or you can actually work out from the shooters um forward vector okay so what we can do here we just use impact normal and drag that up base damage we'll do a 0.1 and the damage causer will be the self um mm -mm -mm. okay i think that's it so hit compile and save that and let's just test this out and put a print string on my current health here. So print string, current health, and let's see if that works. So it's definitely hitting me, but it's not reporting back the damage. Let's take a look at that. Oh, whoops, I forgot to put in a damage actor. Now will come from our hit actor here. There. That usually would help. Let's push play again. There we go. So you, know, you see my health going down in the corner. And when it hits uh, zero, I disappear. And he moves on. Okay. 
So that'll do it for this episode. Uh, we've covered how to do impacts and death. In the next episode, we're going to add side movement to the enemy. So while he's shooting at you, he can, he's going to zigzag back and forth to try and avoid shots and add a bit more uh, difficulty to the actual gunplay. So if you want to join us in that next episode, you head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady to catch it early before anyone else. Big thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for making this possible. So thank you again for your support and your donations for this channel. And if you like what I do, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future content, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.